Howdy, 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 my name is Anachi Sasuke. Welcome back to Let's Read the SP Foundation Wiki. In the last episode, we started at the Eternal Fungus and we stopped at the Ancient Death Ray, which may or may not have been owned by Archimedes, we'll never know. In this episode, we're going to be starting with the Midas Owl and going up to the Bottle Baby, which last time I was incapable of saying properly, like, with every attempt. So, let's check out that there owl. Aww. I mean, it's not it's not that all because of the the mouse that's head has been beaked, but I just I like those owls. So, SB391 is to be kept 5.5.5 by 5 by 5 meters in an aviary mixed made of heavy steel mesh. Structures mimicking mixed broadleaf deciduous and pine forest should be placed inside the aviary. Artificial lights mimicking normal day and night patterns are to be kept well maintained. Temperature and humidity should be controlled to mimic a humid continental climate. The door to the aviary should be kept locked at all times when 391 is not being studied, maintained, or fed. Personnel exiting the aviary to be searched for objects removed from the aviary. Personnel attempting to remove material from the aviary without permission will be reprimanded. So, 391 is a single female specimen of Taito Alba Alba, or Common Barn Owl. That is a hilarious scientific name for that. Alba Alba. Is the Alba Alba for Barn Owl and Taito was for Common? I don't know. Pellets regurgitated by 391 are typically comprised of some form of precious metal. What? What was this owl called? The, uh, the Midas Owl. Midas Touch, I get it. Uh, the owl, nicknamed Midas, has been documented regurgitating gold, silver, platinum, and other precious metals. Refer to 391 test logs for more information. 391 was acquired in 2000-something after park ranger somebody reported finding nuggets of gold resembling owl pellets. The foundation found the report of a routine information sweep. Found the report during a routine information sweep. All owls in a 50-kilometer radius were tranquilized and captured under the guise of tagging and tracking equipment. Agents examined and released over blank owls, something hundred, before 391 was found. Addendum 1. After several examinations by Foundation veterinarians, no anomalies have been found within 391. Other than its unusual ability, it is a normal adult member of its species. Addendum 2. Due to repeated contact with researchers Dr. Blank and Dr. Blank, 391 has become accustomed to some human contact. However, 391 is still a wild animal and should be treated with caution and respect. Note, Dr. Blank requested permission to breed 391 to see whether the trait would be passed to his young. Request pending approval from site director. Experiment log. These experiments were carried out after 391 was kept on a restricted diet of boneless, skinless chicken for a week. Researcher also withheld food for 12 hours prior to testing. Name Dr. Blank. Date something something 2000 something. White rat. Excitedly killed and ate the rat. 63 grams of indium pellet. What is indium? Indium is a chemical element with symbol IN and atomic number 49. It is a post-transition metal that makes up 0.21 parts per million of the Earth's crust. Huh. I guess we're just going to be learning things this episode. Uh, what, what was re remarkable is the size of the pellet. It is the same size as the pellet from a normal owl. There couldn't have been more than 10 grams of indigestible material on the rat, but the pellet weighed the correct weight for a piece of iridium that size. It seems that whatever is facilitating the change in matter doesn't adhere to the laws of conservation of mass. Doctor, something something 2000 something. Black rat, same as the white rat. Output, same as the white rat. Note, 391 was placed in an enclosed system where all mass and energy input was carefully measured and showed a gradual increase in mass for about two hours after ingesting. Or about two hours after. No energy or mass change in the system could account for this increase. It seems color is not important to the reaction. The pellet produced, however, can't yet be explained without violating the basic laws of physics. Okay. Tried a 320 gram black rat. Same as previous tests. The rat used in this test was radio labeled, and the digestion process was observed with specialized equipment. The meat of the rat was separated from the fur and bone and digested as one would expect in a regular owl. The extra mass in the pellet is not coming from the ingested material itself. So, the owl's eating like an owl would, and then from somewhere inside the owl is coming hunks of metal. Still adorable though. I just I really like how I, I just really like how barn owls look. So, uh, a plant now found in site 103 and formerly found in the households of nobility. That is a weirdly long name for that. 
It's safe, though. I was completely expecting it to be Keter just because of how crazy that name was. All living instances of 380, uh, 392 are to be held in a standard greenhouse sector at Biological Research Site 103. Population of 392 instances is to be maintained at an upper limit of 10. Selected seeds are to be extracted and kept in cryonic storage at site Biosite 103. 392 is an artificial plant species created via Deovite Thaumaturgy, which is C SCP 3140 and 3399 for other plant species created via Deovite Th Thaumaturgy. I was expecting some sort of answer to what that is. I guess we'll just have to see what that is. Google, is this a thing that you can actually tell me what that is? Okay, so, judging by the f oh, 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 oh. Okay. I was about to be like, oh, I guess it's just a thing within this foundation, and then I saw Church of the Broken God, and oh. Moving on, um, uh, resembling the species Prunus persica, peach. According to a chronicle of the Devas, which is SCP-140, which I've definitely passed but have no recollection of, it's Keter, though. Wait, is this the book that... Ch is this the book that changes as things happen? I think this is the book that changes as things happen. Okay, so. Creation of 392 was attributed to Davite Matriarch Wok of the Wok Clan, circa 800 BCE. It might be Wake, but Wok is more fun to say. Uh, while originally perceived as an act of social deviance in Davite society, cultivation was tolerated. Dr. Blank speculates that the tolerance of 392 cultivation might be attributed to the decentralized model of Davite polit polit polites polities in the form of the city-state and uh, absolute power wielded by matriarchs in these city-states. And adopted by matrilineal descendants of the Wak clan located in contemporary Central Asia and Xinjiang. China. Notably, the leading figures of the Wak clan in these regions were stated to be of partial human descent and supposedly ostracized by conventional Davite clans. The ostracization, however the hell you say that, is speculated to be a significant factor towards the Wak clan's decline circa 300 BCE due to wars within the Qin state. Queen state. Mm. While 392 is physiologically similar to that of Peach, one significant difference is that 392 does not produce fruits from the ovary upon flowering. Instead, it produces a series of physically identical male human heads. Oh. DNA analysis indicates that they are of the same individual, as the tattoos found on the heads are indicative of human concubines belonging to Davite matriarchs. It is postulated that the heads grown from 392 represent a human concubinus of the matriarch Wakwak. The physiology of the heads grown from 392 is mostly identical to that of a human, although the heads lack eyelids and the seed for 392 is located at the prefrontal cortex. In addition, the heads are capable of responding to external stimuli as indicated by various reflex actions. PET scans of attached heads have identified neural activity in the brain. Notably, rate of eye movement and neural activity are consistently higher when fe hu female humanoid figures are within the head's visual axis, axis as compared to other types of objects. Below is an abridged list of reflex actions and responses obtained from heads grown from 392. Okay. A disposable dudette, 690, instructed to wave her hand in front of the head. Irises of head move according to movement of hand. Instructed to caress a head. Irises of head move towards the region where it is touched. Jaws of the head open at approximately 5, five degrees. No vocalization is produced. It's trying to place her lips over the lips of a head attached to it. The mouth of the head open and tongue extended in attempt to touch lips and tongue. Yeah. When detached from 392, neural activity and reflex actions from the heads will cease. The heads can be plucked or, or will fall from the plant naturally via broccoli. When detached from 392, the head will gradually undergo decomposition, allowing the seed to be exposed to water and oxygen. Decomposed matter from the head will then serve as organic fertilizer for germination. 392 was discovered in the Katsura Imperial Villa at Kyoto, Japan on blank blank 1945. Ties to the Davite culture are later identified by a cross-reference of tattoos found on the heads, and this document is subsequently updated with relevant findings from Davite sources at, known to the Foundation. Addendum 1. 392 instances planted at Kyoto were uh, conducted during the Pacific War as part of a ritual to pray for nat national prosperity. 
Those specimens originated from a single 392 seed which was among the gifts from Emperor Yang of the Shui Dynasty in response to tribute sent by Japanese envoys. This practice originated from a description of 392 by the envoy Ono no Emoko, alleging it to be a symbol of prosperity only found in the households of nobility. Addendum 2 Due to the mention of the Sui Dynasty and confirmation of Daivite involvement, a copy of A History of China altered by 140 to include Daivite Chinese interactions was consulted for additional information. The book mentioned 392 as one of the items looted from captured Daivite cities by Chinese soldiers as early as the Warring States period. 392 would be cultivated by the soldiers who harvest it and skinned the heads. The skulls would then be passed off as executed enemy combatants and presented to officials in exchange for promotion and other rewards. Peerage titles, land slaves. The descendants of many clans involved in 392 cultivation gained prominent positions in various Chinese dynasties up to the imperial families of various dynasties. See document 392 Su for more information on this topic. 371, or addendum 371. Okay. Specialized Containment Pro Proposal, Project Yin Yang, Subcategory Argus 100. Project Yin Yang is an extrapolation of data expunged under controlled settings. As such, only approved safe class anomalies will be utilized. Subcategory Argus 100 denotes experimental containment strategies against anomalies requiring visual perception to remain inactive. The following proposal consists of a cross test between 392 and 2733. Usage of 392 and 2733 circumnavigate ethical issues regarding the use of a live human and long-term maintenance of a live observer. Said cross-test consists of the following phases. One disposable dude will be involved in the tending of 392 for a period of one month and will not be involved with other SCP projects. This is to facilitate priming. Said personnel will then be instructed to open 2733 while thinking of 392. Due to 3 2733's anomalous effects, it is hypothesized that a head will manifest. 2733 will be kept open for a period of one year to examine long-term survival of the head. If long-term survival of the head is possible, further application under Project Yin Yang subcategory Argus 100 will be considered. Now, what is that that was expunged? Rajet S. Proposal. Uh, Rajet's Proposal. And it is Thaumiel. I don't know whether or not- Oh, 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 oh! This is SCP-1. So I, I've definitely already read this. I don't remember it, like, at all, because it's been almost a year, but I've already read this. Next up is the Memory Planter. Which is Euclid. Did it say Planter or Planner? Planner. 393 is to be kept in the possession of a designated disposable dude, here, here after, hereby referred to as Disposable Dude 393, at, at site blank. The vitals of Disposable 393 <coughs> are to be monitored at all times to prevent 393 from linking to an important SCP personnel in the event of Disposable 393's death. A secondary Disposable Dude will, be, will remain on standby for emergency reclamation so 393 of Disposable 393 should die. 393 is an ordinary 9 by 14 centimeter blue day calendar with a year embroidered on its cover that always matches the current year. The information on the back of the day planner reveals it to be a product of blank blank publishing. 393 has the ability to link to a nearby subject via unknown means. Once linked, the day planner will appear in the hands of its owner whenever it is not being watched. Additionally, any event written in the past dates of the day planner are instantly recalled by the subject as if they experienced it themselves. Events written in a future date of 393 will elicit no change until the date of the event has passed, at which time the subject will recall the event. If the subject currently linked with 393 dies, 393 will choose a new owner within 10 minutes of the previous owner's demise based on proximity. There appears to be no maximal distance for this ability. For additional details, see testing log. Well, here's an interview log. Interview 393-1 subject. Interviewer, Dr. Somebody. Forward, review of subject's mental state after three test 393-1 and the extent of memory alteration. Begin log 531 something something something. So, you say you spent the day yesterday at Blank Park with your girlfriend Cindy. Is this correct? Yeah, it's a pleasant afternoon. How long would you say you've known Cindy? I don't know, about two years? Do you realize that you've been in this facility for a year now? And before that you were in the Blank State Prison for a life sentence? Subject appears deep in thought, visibly worried. But, oh, 
Cindy was my girlfriend back in high school. I used I used all my conjugal visits to see her. Hmm. I see. How exactly did you see your girlfriend yesterday? You haven't been let out of this facility for months. So it appears to stress him against the fidget nervously. Y you guys gave me leave to see her. It was our two year anniversary. We don't give leave to any D class at this facility, Subject 3931. I'm afraid you never left the facility. Cindy does not exist. It's increasingly agitated and distraught. But, but I knew her! We were high school sweethearts! We've been together 10 years! It was our anniversary! He stands up. Subject 3931, sit down now! Your stories are broken and make no sense. Cindy is not real. Play the tapes! Video log of 3931 for the previous day began playing with a timestamp. Those are fake! You're lying to me! This is just another damn test! Picks up the projector and moves to smash it. Sedate him! They sedate him, take the body off to his holding cell. Glad that's done with. Tear it off, we're done here. They were terminated after refusing to work and attacking any staff who entered the cell. 393 has a heavy effect on the memory of the subject, but subject's memories fall apart under questioning. The doctor. Well, dang. Ah, uh, ear candles. Are these like the candles that Shrek made, or are these something terrifying? They look like they might be the thing that Shrek made, but they also look flesh-colored? So they might be made of ears. 394 should be kept in a standard container lock containment locker at site someplace, so with a combination lock. The lock has to be reset as per standard operating procedure after use. Standard, pros uh, standard positive action defenses are to remain in place at all times. Use is restricted to experimentation only by authorized level 3 personnel. Under no circumstances should 394 be tested in a sealed area. Okay. SCP-394 is a containment of ear candles, each one, uh, each 24 centimeters long and 1.2 centimeters in diameter, one end tapered. The container originally held 24 packs with two candles per pack with 17 packs remaining. The ear candles are hollow tubes of amatol coated with be beeswax and various herbs. Most of the herbs used are common ar aromatics, but some remain unidentified. Each package has instructions on how to proper or how to use the candle, warning to always have a spotter handy as well as taking precautions to keep in an open area with good ventilation. Instructions show that the user is to lie on their left side, place the ear candle's tapered end into the ear canal, and then have their spotter light the candle. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to check and see what the hell an ear candle is. What uh What is an ear candle? A hollow cone-shaped tube of wax-coated paper or other material made in, made for use in ear candling. What's ear candling? Ear candling, also co called ear coning or thermal ar auricular therapy, is an alternative medicine practice claimed to improve general health and well-being by lighting one end of a hollow candle and placing the other end in the ear canal. Well, but why? <laughs> anyway, uh, each package, blah, 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 um, the instructions caution to burn the candle no longer than four hours at a time and to meditate before and after to aid in the realignment of the body's energies. When used, the candle burns with a bright orange flame and a strong fragrance, smelling reminiscent of incense under with an undertone of wax and tallow. The scent has a, a soporific effect on the user, who eventually falls into a, sleep, a deep slumber, not a sleep dumber. The candle, under recommended conditions, will burn with the brightness and heat of a typical ear candle. When interviewed, users tell of semi-lucid dreams with a variety of fantastic elements, as well as the sense of being watched from afar. While the candle burns, the user begins to lose body fat at the rate of 1 kilogram per 5 minutes. During this time, the length of candle remains constant, although in an enclosed area, in an enclosed area the, heat, the air will heat significantly and become oxygen depleted and sooty. The candle will... The candle? The candle will continue to burn, however, until it is either extinguished or the user has no body fat remaining. If the candle is still lit at the point where there is no longer any body fat, the candle will diminish in length and the user's body will start to de desiccate and harden, with death occurring within the first 10 minutes. This event does not wake the user. The flesh will eventually attain the consistency of dried meat, and the scent of the candle will change. Witnesses describe it as akin to a smokehouse or a barbecue, although the odor of incense is still reported. The candle flame will continue to burn down to the user's remains unless extinguished. The corpse will burn as quickly as dry kindling, leaving only a small amount of fire ash. Fine ash. 
When tested in a well-ventilated area, the column of smoke and vapor emitted by the candle is not def deflected normally by air ambient air currents up to and including heavy rain and crosswinds in excess of 80 km per hour. Instead, it drifts steadily in a straight line following a compass bearing unique to the time and location of use. If allowed to orient themselves before lighting the candle, users always lie parallel to this line. Attempts to triangulate the, the destination of the vapor column have been unsuccessful, suggesting that the target is moving. Addendum 1. 394 was discovered in 2000-something at the post office in some place as a package marked as undeliverable. The address in question, blankety blank blank, had been consumed in a fire six days prior. That rhymes. The conditions of the f circumstances of the fire, especially redacted, led to the Foundation being contacted by invaded agents. The package had label had labeling consistent with orders filed through a blank blank, although the company had no corresponding records. The return address for the shipment was erroneous, and so the package remained at the dead letter office until obtained by agent someone. Addendum 2. One instance of 394 was disassembled for chemical analysis. Examination of the Amatl showed chemical traces written in a previously unknown script. Linguistic analysis remains incomplete, but the language has shared roots with other Indo-European tongues. Research suggests that the writing is a description of a ritual offering to an unknown uh, chthonic being, perhaps as a part of a, as a sort of prayer, prayer. Due to the increase in reports concerning spontaneous combustion and unexplained fires in the homes of typical ear candle users, the use of extreme methods to track and contain instances of 394 has been approved. Yeah, got one entry left. Sorry about the sniffling. The baby bottle. The, God damn it, the bottle baby. Yeah. That's not even a bottle, it's a jar. 395 is to be kept in the center of a locked room with it at least 10 meters wide. No female personnel are allowed to, into 395's room under any circumstances. The room is to be guarded by two male personnel at all times. Any unusual behavior should be reported immediately. Any independent movement on the part of 395 should likewise be reported. It is to be fed one liter and a half... One liter of half and of a half and half mixture of blood and milk, both taken from the same individual once a week. Failing to follow a regular feeding schedule causes will cause 395 to increase its range at a rate of 10 meters per day without food. If it has not been fed for more than one week past its inspected time, it will begin to redact it. 395 was a human fetus approximately seven months into its development, contained in a specimen jar. The jar is filled with a standard formaldehyde solution with traces of blood. When a human female comes within 5 meters of the jar, 395 is able to telepathically influence her. At that point, the subject will feel a need to remove 395 from its jar and allow it to feed in the normal manner. All women, regardless of age or medical status, will lactate under this telepathic inducement. Once the milk has been exhausted, 395 will continue to feed, drawing blood and gnawing flesh from the subject. The subject apparently feels satisfaction throughout this process, only understanding what has actually happened when 395 is sated and releases its control. 395 was taken from a traveling freak show whose owner had been using it to control women for his own personal use. It was discovered when police tracked the bodies of his victims back to him. One of the arresting officers fell under 395's control and killed her partner when he attempted to stop her from removing it from its jar. Foundation agents caught re the report from the follow-up investigation and acquired 395. Interrogation of its owner revealed little. He had acquired it along with the rest of the show from the previous owner's estate. Documentation included with the estate indicated that 395 had been purchased from a teaching hospital in the early 1900s. No information regarding the parents was included. Testing by male personnel shows no detectable life signs while 395 is inside the formaldehyde solution in its jar. Only when a female human subject comes within its range does it become active, exhibiting a faint heartbeat and high levels of brain activity. That is extremely creepy. Yeah, so... That about does it for this episode. Uh, that was episode 94 of Let's Read the SP Foundation Wiki. In the next episode, we're going to start with And Suddenly Chair. And we're going to stop at SCP-400, which is Beautiful Babies. Oh, God, it's going to end with babies again? Uh, and by end with, I mean we're going to, like, do SCP-400, and we're going to start on Monday with 401. So, this has been Anashi Sasuke. If, uh, I probably already said that. If you liked it, a like and a subscribe will be groovy. If you didn't, you don't need to do either one of those things, and I will see y'all in the next one. Later.